Hello again, Alan here, Storyteller. Today is the fourth instalment of our six stories, all about the towns of Stoke-on-Trent. Today, it's the turn of Stoke, or to give it its proper name, Stoke-upon-Trent. It's 1200 years old, and it, Stoke comes from an ancient word meaning place. Upon is from an ancient word meaning next to, or by the side of. Place next to the Trent, of course the river Trent. It's the only town that the River Trent runs through. We've got lots of wonderful buildings here, the King's Hall, the uh, beautiful Minster, the incredible factory at Spode and Port Marion, and lots of other places, including the library and the, the market. But we're gonna take your journey around the town and we're gonna see several things that you're really going to enjoy. Our adventure begins with three friends, Misa, Lishba, and Jenny. And they meet up for a walk. Let's go down the canal, they said, because it's flat and there's no hills. That's where we're off to. As they were walking by the canal, Jenny spotted something out of the corner of her eye. What's that down there? There were some bubbles floating up from the water near the towpath wall. Lisper kneeled down. It's a bottle. It must be really old. It's got a cork stopper. She knelt down and gently pulled the bottle from the water. She noticed there was something inside. Carefully removing the cork stopper, she shook out a, a rolled piece of paper. They unrolled it. Oh, this is exciting, whispered Jenny. It's like a, 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 a secret mission. Yes, it is, said Misa. But why are we whispering? I don't know. Why are we whispering? They unrolled the paper and it had some very old and strange writing on it. You'll drink success if ye free me from neath your recreation tree. The girls agreed that they should tell their parents, but Misa's mum thought they were playing silly games, and Jenny's mum and dad were too busy making tea and looking after her little sister. And Lisper's dad said, Oh, for goodness sake, Lisper, it's tea time. Tell your friends to go home, please. They all agreed that they should meet and discuss it at school the next day. The next morning, on the playground at break, Lilia came across to them. She said, uh, why are you so miserable? Did you fail the maths test? No, we've got a worse problem than that. What's so bad that you look like somebody's stolen your phones? Well, we've got this puzzle. And Jenny passed her the, the piece of paper. We found it yesterday when we were, got a bottle out the canal when we were walking the dog. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, stop being a wimp. You're the brains, tell us what, what it means. Lily looked at it. She thought for a while. Well, recreation means like enjoyment or play or something like that. And a tree, maybe it was a tree that had a special significance where the people went to play or, or it's got a special name or, or it's in a special place. I'll have another think. Let's meet again on the bridge after school, after tea. And they all agreed that that's what they do. So at six o'clock, they met on the bridge as they, they said they would. Lilia brought Charlie Ann and Grace with her. They all looked at the puzzle, shook their heads. And for once, when those six were together, there was silence. Their teachers would have been very shocked. But, said Grace, there's hundreds of trees around here. How do we know which one? Is it a special tree? Is it the oldest tree? Lilia shouted, I've got it! And frightened everybody else to death. Jenny dropped the piece of paper. You've made me drop it now! We've been concentrating on the tree. We should be concentrating on the recreation. Where's the only place around here where there's trees and the recreation? And they all said together, Yemen Street Park! Yes! They hugged each other and did a little dance. The thing is, we need to get on there. Lisper, has your dad still got his allotment? Lisper nodded. Bring some tools with you. And so, the next morning saw the very strange sight of six young schoolgirls armed with trowels looking at all the trees around Yeoman Street Park. They decided which one was the oldest and they began to dig around the roots. Grace found a triangular piece of crockery and on it there was a a gravestone marked with a W. 
they had a quick discussion and realised that the closest graveyard was the Minster. But what about the W? Oh, said Jenny, Wedgwood, it must be Wedgwood. And off they went, sprinting through the park, down the street, crossing the roads carefully and safely until they got to the Minster. The girls found Wedgwood's grave and they looked all around it, knowing of course they wouldn't be allowed to dig, which is quite right. They were puzzled, they got nothing, oh dear, dear, where? then Grace had an idea. What if we're looking for a wedged piece of wood? They hadn't found anything so far, it was worth a try. And they looked all around and part way up the arch they found a piece of mortar but there was actually a piece of wood painted to look like mortar. It took a few seconds to ease it out. But on it, this piece of wood was a willow tree and a squiggly line. They looked all around the churchyard, but not a single willow tree was anywhere. Then Lisper said, the squiggly line, that's the river. There's always willow trees down there. We walk there sometimes with mum and dad. And so once again, the strange sight of six schoolgirls running towards the river, armed with trowels, caused a few heads to turn. The girls ignored them and carried on with their quest. It took them a while to discover that one of the willow trees was on their side of the towpath. They quickly ran down to it and they searched amongst the roots and in the lower branches. Jenny spotted a small piece of crockery and she picked it up and showed the girls and on it was a horseshoe. A horseshoe? There's no horses round here. Where are we going to get horses from? Charlie Ann spoke up. Hang on, hang on. My Aunt Marjorie used to live in the West End Village before she retired to the seaside. And there's horses on the side of the fencing. There's what? I promise you, I'll tell you a story on the way. Soon, the girls were outside the front of the West End Village on London Road, looking at the incredible sculptures by the artist Caris Jones. But why are they racing horses? Well, said Charlie Ann, my great aunt Marjorie used to bore us to death with stories when she lived here, but one of them stuck to my mind. And this one, the all down here, London Road, used to be a racetrack, a horse racing track for the very rich. And that's why these are here. Hang on though, said Lilia. My grandma used to work here when it was Bilton's. And there was no horses then. Ah, said Charlie Ann. But when we go round the back, where the canal used to be, there's a painting by a bloke called Rob Pointing. I'll show you. Looking over, they saw the painting. Yes, but where's the horseshoe tunnel? Said Jenny, very skeptical. Well, we have to go down into the car park and I'll show you. And that's when the residents of the West End Village saw a peaceful invasion by a group of schoolgirls armed with trowels inspecting the Rob Poynton painting. But that's not a horseshoe, said Misa, and Jenny agreed. Hang on, said Charlie, it was when the canal was here, it was a horseshoe shaped bridge. Oh, it was Grace who spotted a small tile that didn't look in place, just where the path met the wall. S, but what does S mean? Well, we've got lots of things in the town that begin with S. Well, the town itself, Stoke-upon-Trent. Spode. Not forgetting Stoke City. The Sutherland Arms, named after the Duke of Sutherland. But what about William Shakespeare? Oh, William begins with a W. Yes, but Shakespeare begins with an S. And I've seen S's like that on the mosaic outside the old library. What mosaic? Oh, good grief, you've never seen... Come on, let's all have a look. And so off they trooped to the old library. And as they looked up, sure enough, William Shakespeare's face was beaming down at them in mosaic. Oh, I think I can see something in the bottom corner that doesn't quite fit with the rest of it. Misa took a picture with her phone and the girls looked at it, zoomed in, of course. Lilia says, yes, but what does it mean? Charlie Ann read out a strange little verse. Where he treasure cannot be spied is your place where he can hide. Wait a minute, said Lilia. That's not how you spell hide. Oh, hide, said Charlie Ann. Hide Street in Stoke. 
hide where the tannery used to be. What's a tannery? I'll tell you on the way. They walked all the way up and all the way down Hyde Street. This is the street where the tannery used to be, where they tanned hides, but they saw nothing at all. And then Charlie Ann said, there's another sign, you know. Where? Over the shop at the bottom. And they all went down there and looked at the shop. And on the wall, right next to the sign was the tiniest little mark. Of course, Jenny got the phone out again, and took another shot, a close up, and they all had a look. Tis it now, ye crime complete, need search the cold shop, King's great seat. Something about a crime and a king's seat, but we don't have a king. But, said Misa, we do have a king's hall. We still don't have a king. No, but we've got a Lord Mayor who's got a seat inside the King's Hall. They all smiled. This is it. And off they went to the King's Hall in Glebe Street. So they went down to the King's Hall. And they went into the entrance of the Civic Centre. And they saw a security guard. Grace looked at his badge. Hello, said. I'm sorry, girls. I'm really sorry, but you can't be in here without a grown-up. I'll have to ask you to leave. But, no buts. I'm sorry. You'll have to go. Ah, oh, how are we going to get past him, sulked Lishba. I don't know. And they all wandered off down Glebe Street. Oh, look, said Jenny. The Lord Mayor's going in the main entrance. Perhaps we can go in there. And surreptitiously, the girls followed the Lord Mayor in. And as the door clicked, several pairs of shuffling feet caused the Lord Mayor to turn around. She smiled and said, I'm really sorry, ladies, but I don't think you're allowed in here. But Lily spoke quickly and said, Lord Mayor, while we're here already, is it possible we could look in the council chamber, please? We'd like a close look at your chair. Well, as you've asked very politely, you've said please, I'll... Very well, but two minutes, that's all, and then you'll have to leave. And so, off they went to the council chamber. Once they were in this town hall, they went to the council chamber. The Lord Mayor said nothing, the girl said nothing. They admired the, the scenery for about mm, half a second and went straight to the Lord Mayor's chair. She watched as they wandered up and down and looked in and around it. And then Misa let out a cry of surprise. Oh, Charlie Ann, I think I've found something. Charlie Ann rushed over. Misa said, I can't get it. She reached underneath and Charlie Ann pulled out a cup. Well, more, a goblet. Lilia took the cup from Charlie Ann and had a look at it. She said, it's like some kind of trophy and it's dead heavy. The Lord Mayor looked on, astounded. Suddenly they all turned around. Coming through the door was Sid, the security man. Now listen, girls, I have warned you, you can't be in here. I have to ask... Oh, hello, Lord Mayor. I didn't see you there. The Lord Mayor gave him a withering look. Well, clearly not. Hmm. Tell me more about this gold cup, young ladies. It took about 15 minutes for the girls to explain. From the canal and the message in the bottle, right the way through the town, to finding it under the Lord Mayor's chair. The Lord Mayor beamed. Sid said, uh, do you mind if I have a look? The girls looked at the Lord Mayor and she nodded and Sid took it off Lily and she said, uh, there's some writing on here. Hmm. It's very faded, it's in Latin. And he put his glasses on. He took the cup over to the light and he read it. Victorum primus curriculum equorum viam londinii mdccxix. And that means um, winner of the first horse race down London Road. And it's dated uh, 1719. Yeah. 
The Lord Mayor and the girls looked at Sid, somewhat shocked. Well, said Sid, we've all got hobbies, you know. None of the weekends. I'm a Roman legionnaire with a reenactment company. And they looked quite smug. Well, of course, the story made all the newspapers and the radio stations and even the television. The girls got a great reward. Oh, my goodness. First of all, they had a photograph taken with the Lord Mayor and they all got a copy. And I happen to know she keeps that photograph on her desk in her office. Then they had a luxury trip on the canal right down to the festival park where they had a smashing meal. And then they went to the cinema and then they had two hours, two hours of 10 pin bowling. What a great reward. What about the cup you're asking yourself? Well, it's now in a special cabinet on display at the Civic Centre, just behind the council chamber. And it's guarded by Sid. Thanks for listening. <laughs>